How meaningful is your life? Um, I'm a Dr. Joshua Hicks. I'm a professor in the psychological and brain sciences here at Texas A&M University. I've asked this question to over 100,000 people over the past 20 years. Most people say their life's pretty meaningful. Uh, so most people really rate themselves as saying, you know, a life is very or you know, extremely meaningful. For some people, though, this question seems to be uh, more serious. Um, those who lack meaning, uh, a sizable portion of people, you know, would, it varies in how much their life's meaningful. They don't always think that their life has meaning. Um, we ask this question to people not simply because we care about these individual differences and in levels of meaning, but because we think it's important. Uh, the answer to this little question is important. Um, it's based, our sort of idea that's important is based on many great thinkers like Viktor Fra Frankl and Irving Yalom who have argued uh, that the experience of meaning in life is essential for optimal human functioning. Um, and their ideas and the ideas of many others are corroborated by many over thousands of research studies showing that the experience of meaning are people who, who feel that their lives are meaningful are less likely to be depressed less likely to think of thoughts of suicide, more likely to be happy. Um, it's, so it's related to psychological well-being, and a predictor of psychological well-being, and not just psychological well-being, but physical well-being. So this is a recent study in the UK. They looked at people, um, older people, ages 50 or 60. They measured their, their, how much they felt their life was meaningful, and they, five years later, they assessed their health and found that people who experienced the high levels of meaning in life five years later had less chronic illnesses, less back pain, for example, um, were less depressed, and other studies have shown also actually live longer. And so these studies, along with thousands of others, suggest that the answer to this question is important. It's important that we understand people's levels of meaning in life. The subjectivity of this question, though, comes at a cost. And so how meaningful is your life? That question of meaning can mean different things to different people. So when some people think about meaning, they might think their life's not meaningful because they don't have fulfilling goals. Other people might say it lacks meaning because they have no one to turn to in times of trouble. And because of that, there's a movement amongst meaning in life scholars to not simply just look at meaning in life as this unitary construct, but look at sort of the core elements of what makes life meaningful. And so today I'm gonna to talk about those core elements, which I refer to as the four pillars of meaning. They include feelings of coherence, uh, purpose, what we call mattering, and something that we've sort of developed in, in our lab and studied extensively called experiential appreciation. All four of these pillars are interconnected in that, for example, if you increase your level of purpose, it probably increases your feelings of coherence in the world. Um, but they're all unique, too, in that some things might uniquely influence some of these pillars and not others. And importantly, each of these pillars has a unique influence on the overall experience and meaning in life. And so the first pillar, and perhaps a foundational pillar, is what we refer to as coherence, a sense of coherence. So we are natural meaning makers. Um, we don't need too much time to think about why our life makes sense. Um, it just sort of comes to us naturally. Um, often, you know, we can think about why our life makes sense in milliseconds, even if we really don't fully understand it. Um, this is important. The feeling of coherence provides a sense of existential comfort, and that it allows us to think that we can predict our own behavior, the behavior of others, and that we have some feelings of control. So most of the time, for most of us, life makes sense. Sometimes, though, it doesn't. You know, sometimes uh, life can get in the way of your feelings of, of coherence. So, for example, counterintuitively, Thinking about whether, how, why your life's meaningful too much, overthinking about it, ruminating it, can sometimes undermine the feeling that you actually understand it. Uh, personal trauma can also do this. So we have these expectancies about how the world works. Um, we think you know, we're good people and bad things don't happen to good people and so forth. And trauma sort of you know, shatters those expectancies, as some people say, and can lead to a, a distinct lack of coherence and lower feelings of meaning in life. Um, we've shown this uh, looking at personal trauma, but also collective traumas, too. Uh, so, for instance, uh, right after Hurricane Harvey, as many of you know, you know, it was a devastating natural disaster. Um, uh, it did so much damage, you know, to the Texas coast and, you know, Gulf Coast in general. Uh, we asked Texas A&M students two weeks after Hurricane Harvey hit, so right when the semester started, how much they were able to make sense of the event. And we found that people who were able to make sense of the event 
uh, were more likely to report higher levels of meaning in life. And conversely, people who are still having trouble understanding it reported lower levels of meaning in life. Um, more recently, we've looked at how another sort of collective trauma, in this case, the COVID pandemic, influences people's perceptions of meaninglessness. We didn't do experiment, thankfully, on this, but what we did is we assessed people's college students' uh, levels of meaning in life before the outbreak. Um, we were just uh, for a different study looking at 400 people and their levels of meaning and meaninglessness. And then we assessed them again the semester out after the outbreak. Um, and so why would the outbreak influence your sense of coherence? Many different reasons, right? Especially for college students, so you have these expectancies that you're gonna go to a graduation and all your family's gonna be around you. You might go to prom, you're gonna have this unique first year college experience. And that didn't happen, right? You know, right when the COVID hit, uh, you know, all these sort of expectancies again got shattered. And what we found is that similar to the study, the previous studies, those people who completed measures of meaninglessness, these are 400 A&M college students, reported higher feelings of meaningless after, immediately after the COVID outbreak, a break, a couple months later, compared to those who completed it before. And again, other things probably contributed to this feeling, loneliness, for example. But I think the sense of coherence is a strong, uh, strong predictor of meaning in this case. And so coherence might be one of the most foundational pillars of meaning. A second one uh, is a feeling of purpose. So per people often equate purpose with meaning. Uh, but simply when we think about it, it's the feeling that you have clear goals and aims. You know, throughout life, your goals fluctuate. Certainly sometimes they're very clear and sometimes they're not. Um, some people, when they think about purpose in life, think about this grand purpose, you know, of fighting for social justice or following God's plan. And those things certainly relate to meaning, uh, very much so. But most of us, though, get a sense of purpose on our daily go goals. Um, these are the things that get us off the couch, uh, the things that we do and, and make us move and things that we pay our attention to. Um, these types of purposes are really important to ha feel like your, your actions are purposeful. Um, research shows that those who feel like they have a sense of purpose live longer. Um, a number of longitudinal studies have shown that. Um, it relates to better relationship commitment, job commitment, and other aspects of well-being and, uh, and human flourishing. Um, and so one caveat here, though, is that your purposes or your goals, it's really important that they sort of, you feel like they're intrinsic. They're things that you're passionate about, or at least they're coming from yourself. You're not just doing things that you think other people want you to do. When you have sort of those intrinsic aspirations, those things are really what makes life meaningful. Um, of course, sometimes life doesn't feel like you have a lot of purpose. If you can imagine being laid off uh, sometimes, or, or retiring sometimes, people report lack of purpose. You know, this uh, it makes sense. You know, for a long time, and you've had a career perhaps where there's nine to five wrapped around certain goals, and now those goals don't exist. Um, uh, people whose children leave the house sometimes report a lack of purpose, often referred to as the empty nest syndrome. Um, and so, you know, this is, uh, again, makes sense that they would, that for a long time, their goals have been focused around their ch children, most of their goals, from driving them to endless soccer practices to, you know, ra trying to raise them to be good citizens. All these things, you know, filled their life with meaning in some ways, and now it's not there. And so some people might feel a sense of void or a sense of meaningless when their kids leave. And so coherence is one pillar of meaning. Uh, uh, the purpose is another. The third one is mattering. Um, and this is simply feeling like your actions matter to the outside world. And when we think of mattering, often we conjure up images of people like Martin Luther King Jr. or Mother Teresa. Um, it, those, their lives certainly mattered, and I'm sure they felt their lives mattered too. Um, these are important things, you know, feeling like your life, you know, your actions are going to live on long after your death. This is sometimes referred to as existential mattering. We found that that's very important for meaning, but just as important is uh, what we call interpersonal mattering. And that's feeling like you matter to your loved ones, to your friends, to your community, and so forth. That feeling can also give rise to experience and meaning. It's very, very important. Um, those who feel like they matter um, are more likely to you know, get, uh, be committed to their job. We have there's studies that nurses who feel like their, li their lives matter are more likely to be committed to their job and less burnout and so forth. Um, and uh, it's also important because we all know, some of us have felt, you know, a feeling of insignificance at times in our life. 
Um, and this is a, it really can lead to a dark depression and sometimes for some people at least. You know, if again, imagine that you suddenly get laid off of work. You can feel like no one wants you there in some ways. In your mind, you can sort of make, you know, pretend or you can start to believe that your actions don't matter. Um, I think too, as we age, unfortunately in our society, you know, it's, it's easier uh, than it should be for people as they age to feel a sense of insignificance if no one's calling on them for their wisdom, if no one's, you know, talking to them and so forth, which is important as a society. We should try to cultivate interventions or, or ways in which everyone feels significant, older and younger. Um, I should say one, two things. The feeling of insignificance is not just important for your personal well-being, but it's important for interpersonal processes too. And so Ari Kruglansky at Maryland has done a lot of studies showing that and argue that many of our biggest antisocial behaviors, uh, most extreme I should say, like suicide bombings and so forth, um, are in part motivated by feeling to reinstate a sense of significance, suggesting that we should care about it not just because we want other people to feel better about themselves, but we want society to function well too. So coherence is one pillar of meaning, purpose is a second, and uh, mattering is a third. The fourth one is something that we've studied a lot in our lab and we've sort of developed this construct. And so imagine or just think about what's the most meaningful event that's happened to you in the past week. Um, when you think about this, we've asked lots of Texas A&M students this. Um, most of the time, their answers don't always reflect their purpose or their coherence or sense of mattering. Sometimes, certainly, those things certainly relate to meaningful existence. But sometimes, it's just about the experience itself, you know, like reconnecting with a friend on the weekend, uh, calling an old, uh, you know, family member uh, that you haven't talked to in a while, you know, feeling the sunset, feeling the seasons change. This is what we refer to as experiential appreciation. Um, it's the type of meaning not necessarily that we construct, like figuring out our purpose or trying to understand you know, why our life is meaningful. It's the, thing, the type of meaning that we detect in the environment. It's the type of meaning that's all around us if we have the right set of mind that we can take, uh, that we can uh, feel. And so, for instance, you know, when I think about my, uh, you know, on my deathbed, you know, when I think about if my life's meaningful, um, I'm probably not going to think about all the papers I publish. Hopefully I don't. You know, that would be really not the best thing probably. Or even this TED Talk, no offense, TED, but, you know, this, um, it's very, you know, I'm very appreciative to do it. But I probably hopefully think about these really cherished memories that I've had, these experiences, like when my two-year-old got sprinkles over every nook and cranny of Shipley's Donuts, you know, or when my, when my, uh, my older son, you know, I noticed that he was becoming the sar most sarcastic tween in Texas. You know, these things, you know, these experiences and these memories are really what makes life meaningful. And we found this um, uh, in Texas A&M students, non-students, my colleagues cross-culturally in China and Spain, for example, have found that the experiential appreciation, the ability to appreciate your experiences, predicts your, your levels of meaning in life, even if controlling for your, your experience of coherence, purpose, and mattering, suggesting it matters. You know, it matters that you do pay attention, slow down, and appreciate the things around you. Um, of course, this is not as easy to do. That sounds like it's easy, but you know, if you're depressed, if you're anxious, if you're too stressed out, it's hard to appreciate anything really. Um, which is why things like therapy, meditation, medications, you know, are often helpful to help you reinstate the sense of meaning. I think also social media use, you know, mindlessly scrolling, scrolling through your social media can also do this too. When you're doing that, you know, it's, you're sort of not seeing the beauty that's in the world. You might temporary on your screen, but you're not really seeing the, what's really innately beautiful. Um, and of course, you know, maybe the ultimate threat to all these pillars of meaning is the awareness that will one die, one day die. Um, death, as some would say, is the ultimate threat to meaning. Um, with that, though, as many people have argued, the awareness that will die is actually can be a catalyst to know that now we should start leaving a more meaningful existence uh, sooner than later. And so my hope is this talk, by hearing about these four pillars of meaning, you can sort of think about ways in which you can make your life more meaningful right now. Um, you know, feeling like you trying to pursue really past goals you're passionate about, that are congruent with your true self, that you really care deeply about is very really important. And you don't have to do all, everything in your life related to that, but some goals are important. Um, feeling like your actions matter is really important, as well as the actions of other people. 
Uh, instead of asking Siri for advice, call your grandparents. You know, ask them for advice. They're better, and it's might make a much more better conversation than a computer or AI. Um, and of course, slow down. You know, appreciate the ride while it lasts, because it won't last long. And I think that doing all these things, you know, can help you leave a more meaningful existence. Thank you. Thank you.